हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माय सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता योर माइंड ऑफ आर करंट अफेयर्स सो लेट्स बिगिन टुडेज करंट अफेयर्स क्लास आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर अवेयर ऑफ दिस टाइम टेबल ऑफ आर बी एस एबी एन अबार्ड एज वेल एज आर मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे वॉइस इंटरनेशनल इज द मैगजीन ऑफ विच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो हेयर द राइट आंसर इज इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया सो समाइम्स द क्वेश्चन ऑफ the magazines or the new releases of the government are asked okay so you have to pay attention to such magazines many a times you may see that a psu has released its quarterly magazine and it has a very beautiful name or attractive name like bhagni or bhavna or bhasha something like that but if the name is like that then it is your responsibility to cover that news even if it is an annual magazine or a quarterly magazine that doesn't matter okay now coming back to this news so what has happened the election commission of india has organized a two day international conference okay on the role framework and capacity of election management bodies and this conference was organized in the capital that is new delhi now during the conference the voice international was launched so this is the magazine which has been launched by the election commission of india that much is enough okay and the the new edition of this magazine has a theme so the theme of this edition was collaboration and partnerships for voter education and awareness so this is the theme so if you can just remember that voice international and voter education and awareness then it would suffice okay because the voter education and awareness is the keyword here and this is the keyword of the theme and this much would be enough okay now we are talking about the election commission of india so why not talk about the commissioner himself so right now we have rajiv kumar as the chief election commission commissioner anup chandra pandey as the election commissioner then we have arun goyal as election commissioner so this is the constitution of the election commission of india and all these three persons are important okay the next question is when was the global partnership on artificial intelligence launched so the right answer here is 2020 now what has happened the news is very interesting that india has got the chairmanship of this partnership okay of this uh, forum you can say so it is the global partnership for on artificial intelligence now you would be amazed to know that this forum does not include many countries only 25 countries are members of it and india is among the founding members of this alliance now from the very name itself it would be clear to all of you that this is for uh, increasing the reach of the artificial intelligence by increasing research into the field because artificial intelligence at present in is in its very nascent stage it is very uh, i would say not exactly novel technology but yes a lot of work is needed in this field so this partnership focuses on increasing the research as well as activities in the field of artificial intelligence and that's the basic idea of it now india has got the partnership sorry chairmanship for 2022 to 2023 and this uh, uh shifting of the partnership or uh, this handing of the responsibility will take place at a specific ceremony that will take place in tokyo japan okay so it would be a symbolic kind of ceremony wherein france will be handing over the uh, the chairmanship of this partnership to india in tokyo okay so here in this manner three countries are involved but japan does not have anything else to do with this partnership apart from hosting this uh, ceremony okay now india joined the organization as a founding member in 2020 that we have already discussed artificial intelligence scope in india is expected to be 967 billion dollars so artificial intelligence can add up to this much to indian economy and that is the scope of ai in india okay so that is very huge and uh, this number guys is significant because you can expect a question on the emerging technologies and more precisely on ai itself in your esi particularly exam okay so then 
this number would help you ace your answer and get more marks now the second thing is that it is also expected to add 450 to 500 dollar billion to india's gdp by 2025 uh, accounting for 10 percent of india's 5 trillion gdp dream okay <clears throat> Now it's time for the knowledge nugget, wherein we will be discussing about the Global Partnership Alliance for the Artificial Intelligence as well as we are also going to discuss about certain summits. First, let's discuss about this GPA. So this GPA is your Global Partnership for Artificial Intelligence and it is a multi-stakeholder initiative. Obviously, many countries are involved and the basic purpose of this is to support the cutting edge research and applied activities in the AI related fields. 2020 May it was launched. Okay. Now, the structure of this partnership is that it has four working groups uh, under it. Okay. First working group is on the theme of responsible AI so that AI cannot be used for hacking or for illegal or illicit purposes. Second is data governance. Third is future of work how will the ai shape the future of workspace because ai is a very big threat to the existing labor market so how will the entire thing be shaped so that ai as well as humans can stay together then the fourth theme is innovation and commercialization okay so on these four themes the working groups have been created and specific working group is working on the uh, on one of these themes okay to chart out the pros and cons of both the things. Okay, So that is the structure. The last but not the least is the members. So as I told you that there are only 25 members of this organization. So you can have a look at the countries which are the members of this uh, alliance. First is India, obviously, which is important for us. Japan is a partner here which is hosting the ceremony and France is also a partner which is giving the chairmanship to the to India and European Union in itself is a partner in this alliance. Obviously, you don't have to memorize all the members, just focus on the members which I just told you. Now, upcoming summit. Okay, we just saw that the chairmanship of the Global Partnership for Artificial Intelligence has been handed over to India. Now, the coming year is very important for India because India is going to host very, uh, I would say, top-notch conferences and summits. First is G20. G20 is group of 20 countries and B20 is Businesses 20 Forum, which is in itself a branch of G20. So, both the summits will be organized by India in 2023. Okay, you can clearly see the logo of uh, G20. Then SEO 2023 summit is also going to be hosted in India. Then BRICS 2023 summit will be hosted in so, uh, South Africa and G7 will be hosted by Japan. So these are the major summits of the coming year. So please remember the host countries of these summits. And now my question from all of you is, tell me the additions of these summits. Okay, this is your task. Okay, so question number three, which state has launched the Mukhya Mantri Shiksha Puraskar Yojana Award? So here the right answer is option B, Odisha. <coughs> okay, so first of all, this is Naveen Patnayak, the CM of Odisha and this is Ganesh Lal, the governor of Odisha. So governors and chief ministers are important. These are very basic uh, as far as the general awareness is concerned. Now coming to the news, what has happened? First of all, Odisha has launched this Odisha State Policy for Children, which is named as Praram. So directly a question can be made that which state has launched Praram, uh, uh, Praram State child policy praram child policy uh, has been launched by which state so that can be a question for all of you now what's the purpose of this policy the purpose is to ensure and fulfill the rights of children 
particularly in the area of protection survival health education and development so it would be a wholesome organization or not the organization but policy that would cater to every aspect of a child life beat protection beat survival beat health beat education beat uh, your development okay so every kind of uh, dimension is covered through this policy so you just need to remember praram child development and odisha so these are the three keywords okay odisha child development and praram now there is one more praram which is also there in the news very recently and that praram is isro's praram okay so this is the policy of isro or you can say the initiative of isro under which it has launched the vikram series rocket it has recently tested the vikram series rocket of skyroot aerospace so skyroot aerospace is a private company so this is india's first private rocket that has been tested by isro and uh, th this private test is termed as mission praram okay so under this mission tara more tests are going to be uh, conducted but this is the first of its kind as of now okay so do remember isro's praram is different and we have odisha's praram as well okay so the policy is going to cater to different kind of aspects we have discussed and while doing that it will also take care of the sustainable development goals like no poverty uh equality education and every kind of thing should be taken care of because sdgs does not only concern to the environment they also have different goals for example quality education of children gender equality is there no poverty is there so all such sdgs which comply or which touch the contours of this policy will be taken care of okay now the next question uh, the next initiative on which the question was made mukhya mantri shiksha puraskar yojana and scholarship scheme so from the name itself it is very clear the purpose of this scheme would be to promote education by giving rewards to the children okay so it is going to promote healthy competition among the public schools to honor the academic performance so that's the basic idea the annual awards totaling rupees 100 crores will be given to school students educational institutions principals teachers school management committees for achieving excellence so this is a huge amount that the state is spending on the school education so that is i would say a very good step on the part of the odisha government to improve the academic performance at the school level okay and where can you cite this as an example if you get a question on the education system of india or the national education policy so you can try to inculcate such type of examples uh, in your answers delhi is one example for the school education now odisha is also you can say following the suit okay fourth question where is the northeast india's first center of unani medicine established okay before telling you the answer of this question or discussing the news itself tell me when do we celebrate unani day because this day is celebrated on the birth anniversary of the founder of unani system of medicines in india so this is your task tell me when do we celebrate unani day and who is termed as the uh, father of unani medicine system of india okay basically unani medicine system ke hi father wo kehlaye jate hain so this is your task now coming back to this news the right answer here is assam so in silchar <coughs> assam this uh, regional center is uh, you can say being developed now in assam only i just told you in ye yesterday's video that in assam only at jogi gopa we are developing the first international multi model logistic park okay so do remember this news as well and all the static facts related to the state of assam now coming back to this news so there is nothing much i have already told you the exact location now it has been handed over to the 
Central Council for Research in Unani uh, Medicines, which is the autonomous organization under the Ministry of Ayush. So this center is a part of this central level organization. So this is important for you to know and remember. On that note, tell me where is this council located? Okay. So here guys, we have uh, the map of seven sister states and the entire Northeast. Sikkim is the eighth Northeastern state. So Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura, Meghalaya, Shillong, uh, and Assam. These are the seven sister states and Sikkim is the eighth. And you should be aware of all these states, okay, which state is near to which state is important because nowadays we have seen that RBI specifically is moving towards more generalized questions, especially geography based questions are being asked. So why not cover them when we are covering the questions related to the uh, geography itself, okay? <coughs> okay, so the next question is, which Indian state has signed an MOU to facilitate trade and investment with Turkey? So here, first of all, before telling you the answer, let me tell you that Turkey has changed its, its name as Turkey. Okay, so that's now the international pronunciation of its name, the correct pronunciation. So which Indian state has signed this MOU with Turkey? So it is Telangana. <coughs> okay, so the Federation of Telangana Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So it is the similar organization that we have at the national level, Fikki. So this organization and Foreign Economic Relations Board of Turkey, both of them have signed this MOU for promoting investment between both the entities. Okay, So here at one uh, place we have a country and at another place we have a state of India. Okay, So that's the distinction that you should be aware of. Now that is the news exactly. Uh, there is nothing more, nothing less to it. But if we are discussing about Turkey, so it is our responsibility to cover the static facts related to that country as well. Because again, general awareness is not only restricted to your current affairs, it has your static portion as well. And the examiner tends to ask static questions from the current affairs. Okay, so let's discuss about Turkey in order to enhance the knowledge. Okay, first of all, the flag of Turkey, red color, start, uh, sorry, start and move. Okay, then, guys, this is your Turkey. So, it is a Eurasian country. It lies between Asia and Europe and it has two parts. Now, let me show you that. So, here, guys, this portion as which you are seeing here, this portion is the Balkan Peninsula. This portion of Turkey is on the Balkan Peninsula, whereas this portion of Turkey is on Anatolia Peninsula or Asia Minor. Okay, so the name of this peninsula is Asia Minor or Anatolia. So this is important for you to remember. Okay, even if you are preparing for banking exam. Now, very recently, two straits were very much in the news because of Russian invasion of Ukraine and these two straits were the Strait of Bosphorus and the Strait of Dardan. Now there is an international treaty which gives Turkey the power to uh, regulate the trade through the Strait of Bosphorus and through the Strait of Dardanelles. This is your task to tell me what is the name of that international convention. Okay. Now coming to these straits, you can clearly see Bosphorus connects Black Sea with Sea of Marmara and this Dardanelles connect Sea of Marmara with agency and this is the way to enter Mediterranean Sea. Let me show you here on the big map. Okay, so here the Strait of Bosphorus is there and here the Strait of Dardanelles is there. So this is Sea of Marmara. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so uh, this is your Sea of Marmara. Okay, so here you, this is Sea. Uh, this is Sea of. This is agency. This is your uh, uh, Bosphorus Strait and this is Dardanelles and this is your agency and here we have the Mediterranean Sea. So that's the basic idea. Okay, I hope you are understanding. 
so here we have the father of turkey ataturk and this is the present president of turkey erdogan okay so that much is enough for you to remember and uh, one more thing that i wanted to highlight is that in istanbul only we have a mosque come church which is hagia sophia hagia sophia now this is a very important monument of turkey okay question number 6 is with which organization has the national education society for tribal students signed an mou to train teachers and students of eklavya model residential schools by providing exposure to experiential learning so here 1 and 1b is the right now <coughs> this 1 and 1b is a us based not for profit organization and this MOU basically aims to provide the uh, exposure to experiential learning. Basically, move from rote learning to practical learning. That's the basic idea. Now, guys, regarding this Eklavya model residential schools, let me inform you that these schools were established under the Ministry of Tribal Affairs to provide education to the tribes. Okay, tribal children. So everything of this. school system is taken care of by the ministry of tribal the next question is who is the current chief of enforcement director so it is sanjay kumar mishra and he has recently got an extension for a year till 2023 now related to the enforcement directorate and cbi you i hope you remember that last year president passed a, an ordinance through which the tenure of the cbi chief as well as the ed chief was increased so earlier the tenure was a minimum of 2 years <coughs> now the tenure is from 2 to 5 years so that was done through the ordinance and this is the critique of that ordinance which you can read on your own but that has been done as of now so the maximum tenure of either a cbi or and ed chief is 5 years okay so 2 years is the mandatory period and beyond 2 years it is on the uh, government's discretion whether they want to extend the tenure of the current chief or not okay so the remaining 3 years will be on the whim of the government so that's the basic idea and that's the basic critique <coughs> okay the next question is when is the women's entrepreneurship day observed so it is on november 19 November nineteen May we celebrate the international sorry National Integration Day, which is called Swami Ekta Divas. Women Entrepreneurship Day, on which the on this day the theme कह लो या campaign कह लो was choose women. Then International Men's Day, the theme was helping men and men and boys. World Toilet Day, theme was the making the invisible visible. So that. the theme of the world toilet day <coughs> so these are the four days which were celebrated on november 19 so this is important now we are discussing about this world women entrepreneurship day because this is the most important day out of all these days because niti ayog has <coughs> a women entrepreneurship platform and under this platform it organizes women transformative awards as well so what is this women entrepreneurship platform this platform basically provides information and services to the women entrepreneurs related to the schemes and everything which can help them establish their business better and this women transformative award is given to the women who have contributed towards society towards business or in any field so these are the two initiatives which are launched by the niti ayog and they are uh you can say in implementation as of now is okay so we were discussing about the women entrepreneurship day i hope now you will remember this initiative as well. so this is the women entrepreneurship platform the ninth question is where will the africa economic conference 2022 be organized so it will be organized in mauritius <coughs> so here Africa industrialization was day was celebrated on November twenty, and 
African Economic Conference uh, will be organized. It was announced on this day that this conference will be organized. <coughs> From November 9 to 11 at Balaclava, Mauritius on the theme of supporting climate smart development in Africa. So this is the theme. Now what are the things that you need to remember? First is this day. Second is the conference place and the theme. Okay. So this is the conference picture. Last question. Recently India has won award uh, the excellence in leadership in plan family planning award. Uh, 2022 at the International Conference on Family Planning. Where was the conference organized? So this conference was organized in Thailand. Okay. And this Excel award was given to India for family planning. So that's a very, I would say, good achievement on the part of India. Now, let me inform you that the total fertility rate of India is 2.0 as per NFHS 5. Okay. So clearly, India's family planning has improved, which is, uh, you can say, evidenced by this NFHS survey. So on that note, let's end this session. I hope you have enjoyed the session and sorry for my cuff in between the session because I could not control it. But nevertheless, try to focus on what I'm saying instead of what I'm coming. Don't focus on that. Just focus on the content and in case you are not understanding any point, you are free to mention it in the comment section. I will try to resolve your query then and there itself. Okay. So thank you so much guys for watching the video.